Greetings and salutations again, YouTubers. Still working on exactly what niche I want to uh, be making videos in, but in the here and now, I've uh, gone ahead and I'm going to show you the liquid cooling system that I'm going to be incorporating into my new uh, computer build. This is the uh, thermal take. All right, this is the uh, 760 plus. All right, and it, you'll notice that it uses a, a double tall. Um, five and a quarter inch base lot. So this is what I'm actually going to go ahead and open up. Now before I had the integrated coolants, um, and here we have this, they decided to use green tubing, which I think is actually kind of cool when you actually make a cut that you get this, um, the, the, the tip lights up, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, instruction manual in several different languages, but it's actually quite readable. Uh, get the English part here. Yeah. You can see the text isn't uh, nearly as small as it was for that front panel uh, thermal uh, sensor and fan controller. And of course, they added in some brackets here. Nothing too spectacular. We'll go ahead and we open this. Now here they did something very interesting. They included this, which is uh, quite valuable. This is uh, used for uh, extracting and uh, adding coolant, which I'm a big fan of. Um, coolants did not. Some regular thermal take coolant. Uh, this is, um, I don't like to use uh, water because water can grow algae, even the distilled water. Um, this coolant is um, obviously it's a glycol based cooling solution. We've been using it, you know, started using it in uh, RAF fighters during World War II. It's been working out pretty well for us so far, and unless you want to do a phase change or liquid nitrogen, I think uh, that for right now, this this will this will do. We have our uh, mounting brackets. For uh, AMD and for Intel, obviously you can see right there. And I'll flip it over. Thermal take, very nice. And of course we have uh, the thermal paste, and you know it's all nice and neat. I don't want to mess it up completely, but it's, it's, it really is um, nice and organized. Not, not a lot of guesswork here. So I'll put that back. And of course, um, we have... Uh, this is the actual cooling block itself. The label is scratched. Don't, don't get all uh, upset. But this is what actually um, comes in contact with the CPU itself. And, and here are the, uh, the nozzles. No, nozzle is calibrating. These are the actual nozzles that you would use. Put this on top of the CPU, thusly. And you can see here, it has a reflective surface. Okay, and finally, we have the actual reservoir and radiator as sort of an all-in-one unit. Which is, it's interesting. I mean, I, I'm probably going to end up using this. I, I may not. I don't know. I don't have any issues with this per se, other than the fact that it doesn't have an actual thermal reading. Okay, you can see here. Here is the actual fan itself, and underneath is the radiator. So the coolant flows through here, and it gets cooled by the fan. Um, we have the uh, power leads, the actual. Output nozzle, input nozzle, clearly labeled. Big fan of that. I, I, I'm a fan of when they go ahead and they um, take the guesswork out of it. That's that's a good thing, in my opinion. And finally, you have the uh, where you put the coolant in, the reservoir. Nice and wide, so you don't have to worry about spilling. I mean, obviously, you would go ahead and do this outside the initial fill-up outside of the case, but um, 
you know, when you, after you uh, run it through and the tubes fill with the coolant, it's, it's nice, you don't have to worry about uh, it spilling because the hole is too small. So there it is. Next week you see the actual case that I'm going to be using. And, uh, you know, that'll be it. And by, uh, by the time that goes live, I will have figured out exactly what it is that I want to do with this channel. Thanks for watching. Like and comment. Subscribe.